She's a world-renowned photographer and a great music artist, and to be honest, a dear friend of mine. T.Y. Baylor joins us on the show. T.Y., thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Now, many people know you now for your great photography. Let me roll back and go in that time capsule. What was the first camera you ever picked up yourself? Oh, it's funny. My, my sister gave me a Minolta, a tiny Minolta. I, just, I was just finished from university and I was working as a hairstylist. I thought I was going to be a hairstylist for the rest of my life. That was my passion at the time. And so she gave me this camera to take, um, to make images of my hair, um, the hairstyles that I, I did. But the images were really good and people would always ask for it. Are you sure it wasn't the Minolta? Tiny, tiny point and shoot Minolta, my very first camera. So it wasn't you, it was the Minolta, wasn't it? It was probably the Minolta, right? You know. <laughs> so, so at that point, you realized you had an adeptness for, for taking pictures, or for you, it was still just fun? It was just fun. I, you know, I used to paint as a child, and I, um, I realized very quickly that art, art is, is the same thing across board. It's composition and texture and colors. And so it was very easy for me to connect with the camera and express myself because I hadn't painted in years and the camera was another way to express my ideas. So it was so natural, it came so natural to me. But did you ever think, because you were, you were making music, you were a part of a super group uh, that grew out of Nigeria and then uh, conquered the world oh. to a degree. I always remember a, a, a concert you guys did yes. where you, you uh, Probably at that point was 20,000, 30,000 people excel in London. Yes. And I saw you coming in like angels all wearing white. Yes, like, I remember that. Ooh, who are these people? The group called Kush. Did you at any point think, yep, music is the thing that I want to do? Not hairdressing, not photography. You know, it's funny. I never ever thought I'd make music. It's it's just, you know, it's just something you do. I, I used to write songs, but just for the church or for myself or to encourage myself, to now find two other young ladies and a man who we, we when I brought my sound and they brought their sound to mine, magic happened. Now the two other ladies were Lara George Lara George and, and M.M. Emma, okay. and the guy was Dak Watori Miro. Uh, who's gone on to be an incredible producer, producer ranger yes. in LA now. Yes, yes. Okay, so the Jesus thing, because you, we all know you, very well for being a Christian. Uh, where did the Jesus thing happen for T.Y.? Hmm. I got born again at the age of 11. And I guess it was also because the idea of God being a father, my father was late and that... So when you say your father was late, what does that mean? My father passed away okay. when I was much younger. Okay. So when, when someone brought the gospel to me, they had brought to me the idea of God being a father. So I quickly, it totally made sense to me. So from very earlier on in my life, God has always been my heavenly father. I understood what that meant. Because mm -hmm. I saw other people around me, they all had dads. I didn't have a dad. So there was someone I could ask for things right. and I would get. So I got born again really, I became a Christian really, really early. But it was very real to me as it is now even as a child. So on, on that subject of, of fathers, in, in your Christian journey, in, in your life, who were then some of the people that became uh, uh, an expression of God the Father on earth to you? Oh, wow. God has been very kind. He sent me many teachers and mentors and much older friend from vet friends from very early on. I remember when I became a Christian, there were like three teachers in my school who just wanted to see me move ahead in my journey. Do you remember their names? Because yes. of course, now, nowadays, there are many who want to, they do claim you as uh, uh, a my daughter. I remember Mr. Imoy Sili. Ooh, that's a name. Yes, Imoy and Sili. Mr. Ola Geshin. And I remember Mr. Ola Geshin called me once. I was pretty much an average student. And he said to me, you're a Christian now. That means you're the head and not the tail that means that you cannot be average anymore. And I totally, absolutely believed him. And I went on from being an average student to being the number one student in the entire school. And at that time, that became a major point for evangelism because half the school turned and became Christians because if I could become not number one in my class, I had the 
absolutely best results. Were you that bad? I was I was average. I was not bad. I was just always on like the on the line of being bad. Right. But then somebody told me that, oh, you know, you can ask God to be the best. You can ask God for number one. And I did. And then that meant that God led me to study harder. But I became in my entire secondary school the first and number one student in the school. That was a clear testimony to other 12-year-olds and 13-year-olds and in droves. Wow. <laughs> now, T.Y., I know that there, there are many um, points in your, in your life that shaped your faith. One which was the conception and birth of your boys. Yes. Uh, and I really want to hear more about that and, uh, and about your photography. Yes. So you'll tell us that. I will. After this. After that. T.Y. 